I have tried many keyboards on the channel, but no other keyboard has caught my eye on just how unique its design is, the keyboard being the Apple Maker Dynatab 75X, the first keyboard I've used with a functional screen. It's crazy, however it's also pretty expensive. Should you buy it? Let's see. Let's get straight into the review. Before we get into the review though, here's some ASMR just for you guys to get a grip of how this sounds and how it feels. So let's talk about the design and build first. Straight up, we have a white keyboard with purple keys and as you guys can see, this keyboard is much bigger than the other 75% keyboards you'd find on the market. By bigger, I mean way bigger. Obviously what's taking up the space is the dot screen which we will be talking about in a bit. And I initially didn't think I would like the keyboard just because of how big it is, but it is really growing on me. I am a minimalist keyboard kind of guy, but this added bulk doesn't seem to bother me anymore. Obviously it depends on how you want your keyboard, but in my opinion it's not that bad. Obviously you get a lot of extra functionality, but again we will be talking about that soon. It is made of plastic from what I can tell, and at this price I was hoping we would get something like aluminium just to make it feel a bit more premium compared to others at this price range. Being plastic though, it doesn't have the same premium feeling of metal, however that does have the added benefit that it is pretty light. And by the way, this doesn't feel cheap by any means. Plastic and metal, yeah, you can go on for that debate forever, but this still feels like a really premium feeling plastic. This isn't a cheap feeling type of plastic. The keys also feel really nice. They have a nice soft and consistent texture on the keys and the print of the letters don't feel cheap either. They won't be coming off anytime soon after using this keyboard for a long time. We also thankfully have a kickstand at the back of the keyboard. Now this is great because also it's double layered, which is really nice for those who want extra movement, like extra height on their keyboards. And I've always criticized keyboards, the ones that don't have a kickstand, because honestly, for me, sometimes I do want to use a kickstand, sometimes I don't. It really depends on how I feel. But just having that is really, really good. Now enough talk about the actual keyboard, let's talk about the actual screen. It's a 60 by 9 obviously RGB, and it looks great, as you guys can see by the B-roll. By the way, if you like the B-roll, maybe you can like and subscribe. But yeah, it's not the most high res, obviously, like I said, 60 by 9 but it's not really supposed to be. It's there to add some flavor to the overall keyboard and make it different from the other ones in the market. It's customizable through the software, which you can download for macOS and Windows. Thank God, because most of these softwares don't actually come for macOS, and I'm a proud MacBook Pro user. But if you don't want to download them, there are a lot of presets you can scroll through, of course, with different RGB effects and different colors. However, I am using the app, and I did make this preset with my name, the YouTube logo, and a smiley face on the side. It's really bright, you genuinely can't miss it, and it does use quite a bit of battery, so turning it off will help with battery performance if you need. Overall, it does take up a lot of space on the top of the keyboard, especially being a 75% keyboard, it is pretty big now, but in my opinion, it's definitely worth it. It looks great and it can be functional if you want it to be or it can just be a really nice piece to look at. Now let's talk about the feel and the switches of the keyboard. Like I said before, the keycaps do feel soft and consistent and the switches aren't some that I've used before. They're actually called Flamingo switches. That's the Apple Maker Flamingo switches which have low friction and have a smooth scratchless keystroke experience with no additional lube. So yeah, it actually does feel really, really nice. I've been using switches such as some red switches, some brown switches, some yellow switches here and there. So yeah, these new flamingo switches were definitely something different, but they do feel frictionless. It is a straight button going down without anything interfering. Here's everything else on the screen that my fellow keyboard nerds would wanna know about the keyboard on the screen now. But as a person who just really just likes the feel of the keyboard without getting into the details, it feels really good. I'm more of a clicky person, somebody who uses a keyboard with a bit more feedback, like when you press down, there's a noticeable click, but this is definitely something I could get used to. It's not silly loud. It's almost, it's almost like a comfortable feeling. I don't know if that makes sense, but when you press it down, it's like a comfortable press. It's a really comfortable press. That's the word I think about when I think about my typing experience. In terms of connectivity, it's pretty simple. We have Bluetooth, which you can connect up to three devices with low latency, low lag, so if you are gaming over Bluetooth, it won't be that bad. We also have a cable, which we do get in the box, a nice braided USB-C one. And also there's a dongle, which is nicely covered actually in the front of the actual keyboard under this little flap. This could have been a bit more hidden, but again, it is kind of cool. It is literally under a flap. But yeah, the switch to move through the connectivity modes is a little bit soft though. It definitely could be more clicky going through the actual modes. Like sometimes I do get, I want to do it into the middle mode 
but then it goes all the way to the top then I have to try you know you, you definitely need nails if you're going to try and adjust those some ad additional features like I said before of course we have RGB lighting and yeah you can draw the RGB lighting you can add all your different effects and there's also a community tab which you can add and find more effects if you want to and the software is also pretty good sometimes the software actually does bug out on my mac but i guess they can fix that in a software update it's nothing major most times it does just open how it should be and yeah the software is good for just adjusting things like you can add macros you can adjust the lighting like i said and yeah overall the app's okay as well but you don't need the app you can definitely get away using this keyboard without the app so in conclusion the Apple Maker Dynatab 75X obviously the main man of the show is that screen we have at the top customizable yes it is yes it is big but again it is more of a statement piece you buy it because you like the look you're not it's not something that you like all right i'll buy it i'll see you buy it because you like the way it looks but yeah the dynatab 75x you're gonna buy this keyboard if you want that statement piece that keyboard that looks way different than all the other keyboards on the market if you want more videos like this make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and with that said i'll see you guys in the next video who knows what we will be reviewing next but you definitely want to subscribe join the community but with that said i'll see you guys in the next video peace